Welcome to Faith is Alive Ministries, located at First Baptist Church, 611 Broad Street, Harrisonburg, Virginia. Due to the coronavirus outbreak and social distancing, First Baptist Church has suspended its formal services. This outbreak will not stop his disciples from working. You may visit our website, firstbaptisthbgva.org. First Baptist Church features the Dr. C.E. William as senior pastor. Remember to wash your hands regularly and practice social distancing and be safe. Over the next few weeks, you will be blessed from the pastor's desk or sermons featuring him or one of our many ministers on staff. For your praying needs, you may contact our ministerial staff, deacons, or deaconess. May the Lord bless and keep you during this trying time in our nation. We hope you are blessed by the message. Once again, thank you for watching Faith is Alive Ministries. Welcome to Faith is Alive Ministries broadcast with the Dr. C. E. Williams. We hope you find something that will touch your life today and tomorrow. Faith is Alive Ministries is located at First Baptist Church, 611 Broad Street, Harrisonburg, Virginia. You may visit us any Sunday for worship service, which begins at 11 a.m. And now, open your hearts and your minds to the spirit of a living God. First of all, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we thank God for this, another day that he has blessed us with. And above everything else, we want to thank you for, for tuning in to our, our first Baptist broadcast here with Faith is Alive Ministry. We pray that all is well there in the homes and the families and as we continue to embrace uh, and the, the uncertainty that is going on ahead of us as we look toward the, uh, amen, the near future. Uh, the Word of God is our, our refuge, and we draw nigh unto Christ, and you know, we're looking for His return, uh, for His church. So we want to be, keep this a wake-up call, this is an awakening time period, and, and we want God to just continuously bless us, even in the midst uh, of our storm. So uh, uh, we invite you to open every heart and receive the blessing that is set before us on the message for today, and learn how to, and, and be able to just get loose and let go and let God have uh, amen his way. Um, okay, we see you at the end of the service and uh, enjoy the presence of the Lord.
love of God, as your children come before you once again and say thank you. Lord, thank you for allowing us to have another opportunity to come and sit at your feet. Lord, I'm inviting you to allow your anointing to dwell in this place today. Father God, I'm asking you to hide me behind your glory. Lord, that all be said is all about you and none about him. Lord, use me on this day through your scriptures to feed your sheep. Not my will done, but thy will shall be done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Good morning, good morning. The song said this is just a rehearsal. But I like to think that this is the real deal. I am Reverend Kamala Hearn, an associate minister of First Baptist Church on Broad Street. Today, I come before you to help you and I change our perspective through God's word. Job told us in Job 14 and 1, he said, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Today I come to you with a 911 message entitled Change Your Perspective. Our text today is coming out of Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. With the help of Holy Spirit, we are going to walk through these scriptures and highlight three areas of our life in which we need to change our perspective. Here in the text we see the Apostle Paul is speaking to believers. He is speaking to the body of Christ. He is speaking to those who are supposed to know better and should be living better. Apostle Paul starts off in verse 5 in chapter 2 of Philippians. He says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Even to the death on the cross, Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and those in heaven and those in earth and those under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So today I'm going to take about 15 minutes and I'm going to highlight three areas of our life in which the Apostle Paul is bringing to life to the Christians. See, the first area in which I believe that we need to change our perspective, when we talk about letting this mind be in us that is also in Christ Jesus, the first area in which we shall change our perspective is our lifestyle. Our lifestyle, what we do every day. See, I'm not talking about the lifestyle of the rich and famous. I'm not talking about dressing up the outside with all the right draperies, the finest jewelry. 
the best name brand. See, Apostle Paul is speaking to the believers who confess to be Christ-like. Paul is addressing how we should view our journey in life. He is trying to get believers to understand there must be a shift that takes place. Paul is saying, when he said in verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, Paul is saying, this is my bottom line. He said, you have been called into the role of servanthood. When Paul is trying to get the body of Christ to understand how important it is to change our perspective, Paul wants us to understand that we are called to serve and not to sit back and expect others to serve us. Paul trying to get us to understand that it is necessary that we enter into a place where we shift our mind to walking in humility as the Messiah did. See, he made it known to the body of Christ that Christ himself made no reputation for himself. He walked this earth as a humble servant. He submitted unto the will of God. And he did it in obedience unto death on the cross. <laughs> See, my question for you today is, what does the fruit of your lifestyle speak about how you have changed your perspective? Does the aroma from the fruits of your lifestyle smell like submission unto God? Does the aroma of the fruits of your lifestyle smell like obedience unto God's perfect will? If someone had to testify about the perspective of your life, can they say that you walk in humility as verse 5 speaks about how Christ walked? See, we need to realize that Apostle Paul is trying to get us to understand that our lifestyle change, apart from God, we cannot survive. So the first area that Paul is trying to get the church to understand that they need to shift, well, they need to change our perspective, is a lifestyle change. He ain't talking about making a name for yourself in the earth. He talking about a lifestyle change where God can use you beyond salvation. Use you to equip discipleship. Use you to mentor other people along the way. Use you to be a vessel to build his kingdom, to build his purpose. And to realize that this lifestyle change that Paul is trying to get the church to understand that all the glory belongs to God. The next area in which Apostle Paul is highlighting us to us. And 2 Philippians, verse 5 through 11, the perspective in which we need to take is we need to learn of him. See, if we're going to change the way we live to the way Christ has ordained us to live, we need to sit at the feet of the master. We must become the student. Every day, we must enter into the school of Jesus. <laughs> See Luke 6 40 says the disciple is not above his master but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. So the more that we learn from him <clears throat> the more we begin to understand who he is and the more we have the opportunity to become more like him. See Paul is telling us and he told the Christians back in the day that it's necessary that we keep a teachable spirit. See, if you and I truly desire to mature in Christ and change our perspective from living self-righteous in our own strength to living righteous in Christ, we must change our perspective to the way Christ thinks. See, we must learn how to eat, James 1 and 22. James 
tells us to be a doer of the word and not just a hearer, deceiving our own self. Paul wants us to understand that it's as we begin to change our perspective on life, we must take what the word of God says and walk it out. We must do what God's word says. Paul is trying to get the church to understand there's an accountability in this shift. What we're thinking from is not about us and realize it's not about us to shift into thinking of what God has called us to do. See, we confess it's easy for me to say I will shift my thinking to the way Christ thinking when everything is lined up and all my ducks are in the row. But can you sit at Christ's feet when storms are raging in your life? See, many times the heart know, God, I thank you for allowing me to spend time with you on this day. But when trouble knocking at your door, can you still find time to spend with God? Or are you trying to be Mr. and Mrs. Fix-It, forsaken, being a student, sitting at the feet of Christ? <coughs> See, we cannot expect to thrive and live according to God, way apart from Him. So the third area in which I believe Apostle Paul is trying to get us to understand about the, our perspective must change is how we find rest. See, when we're talking about, Lord, I'm gonna, I want to change my perspective to the way you think. If we truly want to change our perspective to the way Christ thinks, and we truly want to find rest in the midst of shifting, then we must learn how to rest in the Messiah. So you say you're going to change your perspective on how you view life. See, don't forget Job said our time is limited in this earth. And we will encounter some trouble times. <clears throat> See, can you change your perspective to the way God thinks when relationships are broken? When parents and siblings haven't spoken in a year? Can you change your perspective to the way God has ordained in the midst of the storm instead of rehearsing the problem. See, the reason you can find rest when you change your perspective is because you have the blueprint. See, you can change your perspective in the midst of a storm <clears throat> because you have the blueprint, the Bible, with every strategy you need to find rest. See, we must apply the principles of God to our life. We must take the strategies that God has put in his word and put them in play. See, we must take and work the principles of God in our life, in and out of season. See, when Paul is talking to the church, Paul is not talking as he has arrived. Paul is talking because he had, had had an experience with God. And Paul himself had changed his perspective on how he is supposed to live. See, if we're going to change our life and dwell in according to Philippians 2, verse 5 to 11, if we're going to do as Christ himself walked upon this earth in humility, in obedience, as a servant, understanding <coughs> that it's not about him. It is him walking through the journey, but he submits unto the rules of the Father. Can you submit unto God's will and God's way and change the way you think about how the storm is going to take you out to the way God thinks 
and still see that their better days are coming. See, we need to, we must have faith in God. See, if I'm going to change the way I think, if I'm going to change the way I live, then I must have faith in God and the teacher if I want to take on this lifestyle, this gift, this blessing that he has made available to me. I need to shift from my playing my own strategy, shift from trying to apply my own principles into a place where I am totally sold out to the blueprint. See, with, because Job had made it clear to us about trouble, it's going to come. Paul has told us that we need to change the way we view life. Christ himself has gave us access to the blueprints and everything that we need to be successful. So my question to you, what are you going to do about changing your perspective from living within your own limited abilities, from living with your own limited strength, and to a place where you're changing your mind to think like Christ thinks. So when storms hit our life, instead of saying, woe is me, you say, Lord, I thank you because I'm fighting from a place of victory. The victory is already won. See, to change our mindset the way Christ thinks, we think from the platform that God already did it. God already made the way. So all I got to do is press my way through. Because I'm not fighting trying to win the victory. The victory is already mine. See, the strategy and Christ's blueprint is fireproof. See, let us unite together and walk it out. I mean, let us be purpose-driven through God's word. Let us live it out. I mean, be intentional on the decisions that we make in life. I encourage you to be authentic. Never settle for being a carbon copy. Know your worth in the body of Christ. You are not a carbon copy. You are the real deal. <clears throat> Paul is trying to get us to understand that everything that you and I need to be successful in this earth, God has made available to us. We have access and has been granted to us. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you for allowing me to have these few moments to come before your people and um, encourage them to change their perspective. To change their perspective from three different areas of their life. Through their lifestyle, as a student, and, and rest in you. Lord, we give you all the honor and all the glory for everything that has been done and said through this ministry. Lord, I thank you for healing for the land. Lord, I thank you for healing for the shepherd and his family here. Lord, I thank you for unity in the body. Lord, I come to you at the conclusion of this message and what you have allowed me to share with your people. Asking you to continue to cover us. Asking you to continue to bring healing. Asking you to continue to teach us how to change our perspective to the way you think. To the way that you have ordained us to live. Lord, let your anointing dwell in this ministry from now and forevermore.
and Jesus' magnificent name I pray. Amen. Due to the coronavirus uptick, the pastor has decided to postpone entering the sanctuary for first Sunday in November. This is an effort to keep everyone safe due to the rise in cases. Please be on the lookout for more announcements on Facebook, the website, or one call. Romans 12 and 12. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. As of now, watch night services will still be held as scheduled. Please be on the lookout for more announcements or by one call or if there are any needed changes for that service. Remember to stay safe and continue to practice mask wearing, washing of hands, and social distancing. If you'd like to give any donations to the church, please mail them to First Baptist Church, P.O. Box 467, Harrisonburg, Virginia 22803. Keep on the lookout for our online giving. Once again, Thank you for listening to and watching Faith is Alive Ministries featuring First Baptist Church, Harrisonburg, Virginia, with the Dr. C. E. Williams, Senior Pastor. Amen and amen. We're praying that you receive the word of God as you, uh, as you apply it to your life and to uh, your families and your homes and 
As you go about to our Father's business, do in the will of God. God came by and visited us from today. And we, we not only appreciate His presence, but we love the things that He does within us as we search deep into His cause. We invite you to, uh, to give your life to Christ. If you don't have a church name, or don't know Him as your personal Savior, uh, amen, to come into the fold of Christ that you may know and be a good steward, become a sight. Not a church member, but not a whole lot of disciples. We ask of God to, to strengthen us in that process that we may understand and know. Find a place of worship, get to it in good Bible learning uh, classes, teaching, Sunday school, and get ready for uh, His coming back again. I want you to stand by now for some announcements coming from the uh, uh, media ministry lead, uh, Brother Hearn, and he will do, okay, let you know exactly what God has in store for you so that you may want to minister to with either and or make uh, donations as you see fit. So if I would leave anything with you all today through prayer and supplication, amen. We want you to remember Psalms 91. Not to read the whole uh, Psalms itself and, and allow yourself to just get loose and just get into it. And what I love about uh, this particular Psalm, it, it really makes you feel good when you know that God not only is present, but you can feel the presence of God uh, in every aspect. Uh, look what David says. Uh, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And he says, makes this so specific, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He's my fortress. And amen. He's my God. In Him will I trust. So we invite you to just trust God. Trust Him in the deepest portion from your soul up through your heart and allow your mind to be focused on Him and day in and day out. May God bless you. We'll see you on next Sunday. Stay tuned. Have a great week. Stand by for our Bible study later on uh, during the week. Amen. We invite you to just enjoy the Lord. God bless you. Have a great day on behalf of the First Baptist family. And amen. First Lady, myself, and family, we bid you Godspeed. Watching Faith is Alive Ministries broadcast with the Dr. C. E. Williams. If you would like to become a partner or sponsor with our TV ministry, please write to Faith is Alive Ministries, First Baptist Church, 611 Broad Street, Harrisonburg, Virginia, 22802. Or visit our website for more information on how to become a partner or sponsor. Our services are every Sunday with Sunday school starting at 9.30 a.m. and worship services beginning at 11 a.m. Bible study is every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Contact us on the web at firstbaptisthbg.org or send us an email to fbcharrisonburg at verizon.net. Stop by and visit where the motto is, everybody is somebody. 
If there's anything we can do to help you on your Christian journey, please feel free to contact us at Faith is Alive Ministries, First Baptist Church, 611 Broad Street, Harrisonburg, Virginia, 22802. Or call us at area code 540-434-3969. You can see us here every week at the same channel, same time. Remember, we are one body, many members. May God richly bless you and your family. Once again, thank you for watching Faith is Alive Ministries broadcast.